We are used to seeing our home planet teeming with diverse life. Every corner of it, from the warm equatorial forests to the icy deserts of Antarctica, is inhabited by millions of living beings. However, it wasn't always like this. Today, we will journey back hundreds of millions of years to immerse ourselves in the prehistoric era of Earth. We will witness how the first terrestrial creatures emerged on the shores of ancient continents in search of new habitats. We will follow the lives of the most famous inhabitants of the Mesozoic era, the dinosaurs. And then, we will witness their extinction following a massive meteorite impact. Their place will be taken by new inhabitants, mammals. In this video, millions of years will pass by us as Earth splits into different continents and we will track the evolution of all living beings up to the emergence of humans. We will learn how our species adapted to changes in nature. Creating such videos is a very labor-intensive process. Therefore, we would be grateful if you subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. This is Space Progress Channel and we are beginning. It all began in the water. Up until the end of the Proterozoic Eon, all life on Earth was concentrated exclusively in the oceans. The solid part of the planet's surface, at different times in this ancient era, resembled either massive ice sheets or lifeless wastelands reminiscent of scenes from apocalyptic movies. The Ediacaran period was the last period of the Proterozoic Eon, which began approximately 635 million years ago and lasted for about 100 million years. During this time, our planet was far from being a welcoming place. If a modern human were to find themselves in the conditions of this era, they would quickly perish. The primary reason for this would be the low oxygen levels, which were only about half of what we have today. However, even if a human could survive initially, they would have nothing to eat. The landscapes of the Ediacaran period were vast deserts and rocky mountains, devoid of any hint of life. At the same time, the coastal areas of the ocean were relatively densely populated with highly unusual creatures that bore no resemblance to any living organisms today. They were mostly soft-bodied and immobile, feeding on nutrient particles floating in the water. These organisms presumably lacked muscles, a developed nervous system, or a hard exoskeleton. All the elements of the familiar organisms to us were simply unnecessary for survival because predators were practically non-existent at that time. They only appeared at the very end of the Ediacaran period and quickly became the dominant force in the ancient ocean. Active predation proved to be a highly effective survival strategy since immobile, soft-bodied inhabitants could neither hide from their predators nor defend themselves. The first oceanic predators had a nearly endless buffet of easily catchable food. It's no wonder that most ancient creatures inhabiting these waters quickly went extinct. The survivors evolved to adapt to the new threats. Around 542 million years ago, a period began that significantly impacted the appearance of our planet. The geological strata of this era are filled with numerous fossils of highly organized living beings. Such discoveries provide grounds to believe that during this time, the ancient ocean was teeming with creatures possessing impressive external skeletons or shells. This process is called the Cambrian Explosion, and it was a crucial milestone in the history of life on our planet. It marked the beginning of the Phanerozoic Eon, the era of visible life. Despite its name, there was no actual explosion on our planet at that time. The term is used due to the rapid development of living creatures that essentially appeared without any prior prerequisites. The first period of the Phanerozoic Eon is called the Cambrian. It began 542 million years ago and lasted for about 56 million years. It gave rise to well-known representatives of that time such as trilobites. However, these eerie creatures were not the only ones to characterize the Cambrian period. It was during this period that the predator-prey relationships became firmly established. Certainly, in the subsequent millions of years, changes in environmental conditions repeatedly disrupted these established food chains, leading to the extinction of some species and the emergence of others. But the principle remained unchanged. Predation became a powerful driving force for evolution, forcing organisms to change rapidly to counter new threats. It also led them to explore new spaces where predators had not yet reached. The Cambrian explosion gave rise to a multitude of entirely new forms of living organisms. 
As it turned out, many of them were completely incapable of survival and soon disappeared from our planet. However, there were those that became the ancestors of other creatures inhabiting our planet. About 530 million years ago, tiny benthic creatures called Hycoella, resembling mollusks, developed a solid cartilaginous tube running along their entire bodies. These creatures are considered some of the earliest ancestors of modern vertebrates. A bit later, there were the Picaia, small creatures resembling lancets, flatworms, or primitive fish. Their sturdy and flexible notochord, combined with muscles attached to it, allowed them to swim in the water by bending their entire bodies. This mode of movement seemed highly efficient and, importantly, fast. This combination allowed early chordates to survive in this challenging period and evolve into more advanced species. Of course, nearly all paleontological findings from the Cambrian period pertain to marine inhabitants, as the vast majority of organisms at that time lived in the ocean. The creatures preserved in rock formations appear alien and even eerie to us. For example, Anomalocaris, a giant shrimp up to 60 centimeters long, was one of the primary predators of the Cambrian. Other findings from that era may look unremarkable, yet they reveal critically important phenomena. Among these, the oldest terrestrial fossils have been found. Their age is approximately 530 million years, corresponding to the mid to late Cambrian period. Without specialized knowledge, it is difficult to discern anything special in these unremarkable looking rocks. However, the existence of such imprints indicates that around this time, the land surface had already begun to be colonized by primitive algae and microorganisms. As they grew, died and decomposed, they formed a nutrient substrate for further development. Most likely, the first colonies of microorganisms on land formed in moist and warm places, such as shallows or the tidal zone of the ocean. Abundant water and light, along with the absence of organisms that could consume young algae, allowed them to grow rapidly and adapt successfully to new conditions. Following the single-celled algae primitive fungi arrived, Unable to synthesize their own nutrients, but efficiently absorbing the remains of dead plants. A hundred million years later, the symbiosis between fungi and single-celled algae gave rise to lichens. These hardy organisms became pioneers in colonizing many new territories. The Ordovician period that followed the Cambrian began approximately 485 million years ago and lasted for about 42 million years. Throughout this time, there was active evolution of aquatic life forms. Mollusks and arthropods, including trilobites, which led a benthic lifestyle, became widespread in the oceans. In addition, jawless fish, similar to modern lampreys and later cartilaginous fish, evolved. Meanwhile, on land, plants slowly ventured farther from the water. The first multicellular plants adapted to life on land leaving behind imprints of spore and vessels used to transport water to the upper parts of the plants. However, animal life still hesitated to leave its familiar habitat. Although it is possible that some arthropods had the ability to explore the coastal zones, most remained cautious. This period ended with the Ordovician Silurian extinction. Its causes are not definitively known, but the most popular theory suggests global cooling and a subsequent drop in the global sea level. Regardless, as a result of the mass extinction, up to 50% of all species disappeared from the face of the planet. Nevertheless, life managed to adapt to new conditions and even reach a qualitatively new level. The next period is called the Silurian. On the geological timescale, it falls between approximately 444 and 419 million years ago. Huge arthropods dominated the oceans during this time, and it was when giant sea scorpions reaching lengths of two and a half meters thrived. Fish, including large and fast predators over a meter long, also saw rapid development. It's not surprising that some creatures preferred to leave the ocean and attempt to colonize new habitats. This was the time when the first arthropods ventured onto land. Ancient sea scorpions and other arthropods were the pioneers in this regard. They had a sturdy chitinous exoskeleton that protected them from drying out and maintained their body shape. They also had small legs that allowed them to move on solid surfaces beyond the sea. The early land dwellers couldn't venture far from the water. Their respiratory organs had to stay moist to function. Safety was another concern as predators had not yet learned to pursue their prey beyond the aquatic environment. 
Gradually, these pioneers adapted to their new conditions and eventually transitioned to a terrestrial lifestyle, ultimately evolving into an incredible diversity of species, from insects to arachnids. The most significant period for the colonization of land can be considered the following period, namely the Devonian period. It began around 419 million years ago and lasted for about 60 million years. During this time, rhinophytes, ancient vascular plants that are ancestors of horsetails and ferns, became widespread. They reached heights of up to three meters and covered all the moist and warm areas on the planet. Unfortunately, they lacked a robust root system and the water in areas where rhinophytes grew off and turned into swamps. A large amount of decaying organic matter absorbed oxygen from the swamp water, making it difficult for aquatic inhabitants to breathe. Consequently, fish living in such environments adapted to gulp atmospheric air to compensate for the oxygen deficiency. Over time, they developed lung-like structures, allowing them to spend extended periods outside the water. Concurrently, plants also did not plan to die, so they began strengthening their stems. The thick stems of plants growing in waterlogged areas provided refuge for fish from larger predators. However, moving through them was quite challenging. Thin fins were insufficient. Powerful and fleshy limbs were needed to navigate through the vegetation. Therefore, the fins of swamp fish elongated and acquired additional bones, serving as the foundation for their muscular structure. This gave rise to the lobed finned fish. Small swampy water bodies often dried up, forcing their inhabitants to crawl over land to reach more humid and favorable areas for life. Gradually, the ability of ancient lobed finned fish to breathe atmospheric air improved and their fins became stronger, eventually transforming into full-fledged limbs. Their appearance also changed. For instance, Tiktaalike, an ancient lobe finned fish amphibian, had a flat head like a frog. Being a transitional form between fish and amphibians, Tiktaalike had powerful fins capable of lifting its body and moving it on solid ground. Additionally, this fish amphibian could breathe both through gills and lungs. The structure of its ear bone clearly indicates that Tiktaalik could distinguish sounds both in the water and on land. All these features clearly indicate that this creature spent no less time on land than in the water. During the Carboniferous period, amphibians had fully transitioned to land, firmly establishing themselves in various ecological niches. Through the process of evolutionary struggle, they gave rise to animal classes such as reptiles and synapsids. The diversity of conditions beyond the ocean significantly pushed forward and accelerated the process of evolution because terrestrial life is influenced by a much wider range of temperatures and other conditions than life in the water. The world was preparing for the age of dinosaurs. The Great Permian Extinction marked a new era, the Mesozoic Era. It began approximately 252 million years ago and lasted for about 186 million years until the global extinction event caused by an asteroid impact. This was a time when our planet was actively changing, gradually taking on its modern appearance. The most important tectonic process of this era was the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea, first into two large landmasses known as Laurasia and Gondwana, and later into the familiar continents. The topic of dinosaurs is incredibly significant in our history, so be sure to watch our film about this period. The emergence of isolated landmasses separated by seas and straits created conditions for the development of independent ecosystems and drove the development of new evolutionary adaptations. In terms of climate, the Mesozoic era was the warmest period in the entire existence of multicellular life. Throughout this period, even in polar regions, there was no stable ice cover. However, there were periods during which temperatures dropped, leading to the extinction of some species and the adaptation of others. The Mesozoic era is divided into three periods. The first is called the Triassic, which began around 252 million years ago and lasted for about 51 million years. During this time, geological processes within the Earth's crust had just begun to break up Pangaea. So, for most of the Triassic period, the supercontinent remained largely intact. During the Triassic, the Ural Mountains, one of the ancient mountain ranges still existing today, completed their formation. At that time, these mountains were young and relatively high. The climate during this period was relatively dry and hot. 
leading to the formation of numerous deserts and a reduction in the area of inland water bodies. Most of the plant mass at that time consisted of ancient seed ferns. However, gradually, they were replaced by more advanced plant groups, such as cycads and ginkgos. Many of these plant orders have survived to this day, but have significantly reduced in diversity. Meanwhile, marine life evolved in its own way. The ocean, which had become desolate after the Permian catastrophe, was gradually populated by turtles and bony fishes. The niche of large predators was occupied by the first members of the Ichthyosaur order. A little later, they would become the most adapted reptiles to the aquatic environment, but in the Triassic, these animals were still quite primitive. The most characteristic representatives of the terrestrial fauna of this time were archosaurs, the ancient ancestors of dinosaurs. By the middle of the period, the first dinosaurs had emerged, although they faced a long and tough struggle for survival. Only by the end of the Triassic, after a significant increase in size, coinciding with the rise in atmospheric oxygen levels, dinosaurs begin to assert their dominance in the Earth's biosphere. While images of fearsome dinosaurs are familiar to nearly everyone and have inspired dozens of movies and thousands of books, they can overshadow other equally important and interesting animals of this period. For example, there was a small creature called Oligochephus that lived in the late Triassic, around 200 million years ago. This small and agile creature belongs to the Cynodonts, ancient animals that differed from mammals only in a few subtle features. Oligochephus had a flexible body, about 50 centimeters long. It was covered in fur and resembled a small marsupial. This herbivorous, warm-blooded animal was widely distributed in what is now North America, as well as Europe and China. While it is not certain whether Oligochephus had a pouch on its belly, the structure of its skeleton suggests extremely small offspring, a characteristic of modern marsupials. Furthermore, there is a high likelihood that these animals nurse their young with milk. Unfortunately, these creatures went extinct at the beginning of the Jurassic period, presumably due to a reduction in their food supply. Nevertheless, they remain the most ancient animals that closely resemble modern mammals. The end of the Triassic period was marked by the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, which led to the disappearance of many amphibian species, some archosaurs and other reptiles, as well as numerous plant orders. Possible causes of the catastrophe include volcanic activity, sea level changes, and abrupt climate shifts. In any case, this extinction event opened up many ecological niches, allowing dinosaurs to strengthen their position on Earth's evolutionary stage even further. The next period of the Mesozoic era is called the Jurassic Period. It began approximately 201 million years ago and ended around 145 million years ago, lasting for about 56 million years. This was a time of significant tectonic shifts and transformations. It was during the Jurassic period that the supercontinent Pangaea finally split into several landmasses separated by shallow seas. If you were to look at the Earth's map from that time, you could already discern the outlines of some modern continents, albeit located in completely unfamiliar positions. The different locations of continents also had an impact on the diversity of ecosystems prevalent on each of them. This is why certain species could be popular on one continent, while they would simply not survive on another. Vast expanses of land were covered in tropical forests, primarily consisting of cycads, gymnosperm plants resembling modern palm trees. In addition, coniferous trees resembling contemporary cypresses and pines were widespread. On land, the era of dinosaur domination began. Dinosaurs displayed incredible diversity and occupied most ecological niches. Among them, there were small lizard-like creatures the size of raccoons, as well as true giants larger than today's elephants. In the Jurassic period, herbivorous dinosaurs that resembled each other externally were prevalent. The largest of them, the titanosaurs, reached lengths of 25-30 meters, and their weight could exceed 75 tons. An unusual feature of sauropods was the so-called sacral brain, an enlargement at the rear of the backbone that hypothetically could contain 20 times more nervous tissue than the brain. It is now believed that the sacral cavity was more likely filled with glycogen bodies, which served as an additional energy source for the nervous system of these giant creatures. Meanwhile, in the shadow of dinosaurs, other groups of animals continued to evolve, such as mammals and reptiles, as well as arthropods. 
In the oceans during this period, bivalve mollusks became widespread and various aquatic reptiles like ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs became the dominant predators. If we compare Ophthalmosaurus, which lived in the middle and late Jurassic period, with the more ancient Symbospondylus, it might be hard to believe that these animals are relatives. This marine reptile had a dolphin-like body with an elegant and powerful crescent-shaped tail. It is presumed that it breathed atmospheric air and could spend about 20 minutes underwater, reach speeds of over 7 kilometers per hour, and dive to depths of around 600 meters. The structure of Ophthalmosaurus's teeth suggests that it primarily fed on mollusks, including squid. The longest and most species-rich period for unique ancient species was the Cretaceous period. It began 145 million years ago and lasted until the global extinction event that occurred 65 million years ago, making it the longest stage of the Mesozoic era. Throughout the Cretaceous period, the breakup of continents continued, with India separating from Africa and slowly moving towards Asia, gradually crossing the Indian Ocean. South America also detached and shifted westward. As a result, by the end of the period, the outlines of Africa, Australia, Greenland and North and South America resembled modern forms, while Europe and Asia were just beginning to take shape. The climate of the Cretaceous period was relatively cool, and from 100 to 85 million years ago, the average temperature slightly increased, followed by another period of cooling that continued until the end of the era. It was during this time that Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops lived, the most well-known dinosaurs and true symbols of the Mesozoic. However, what's even more important is that it was during the Cretaceous period that angiosperms, or flowering plants, became widespread, first as trees and later as grasses. By stabilizing the soil, these plants made it more fertile. Seeds became the food source for many species as they were rich in nutrients. This event triggered the evolution of a more diverse range of mammals and, to a lesser extent, some herbivorous dinosaurs. By the end of the period, Distinct groups of mammals could be identified, such as herbivores, insectivores, carnivores, and primates. One of the largest mammals of the Cretaceous period was Repinomimus, which lived around 125 million years ago. It had a body length of about one meter and weighed approximately 13 kilograms. Based on its tooth structure, Repinomimus was a carnivore, although its limbs were short and clumsy, suggesting it might have scavenged carrion. Meanwhile, in the seas, large swimming reptiles dominated for a long time, such as ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. However, approximately 1995 million years ago, their numbers significantly decreased due to a phenomenon known as the Cenomanian Turonian extinction, which was associated with a sharp drop in oceanic oxygen levels. One possible cause is increased underwater volcanic activity. The end of the Cretaceous period was perhaps the coldest stage of the Mesozoic. All living beings tried to adapt to the inevitably decreasing temperatures, including the dinosaurs. About 70 million years ago in the northern part of present-day Alaska, an extraordinary dinosaur called Nanuxaurus lived, being a distant relative of the monstrous Tyrannosaurus. This dinosaur resembled it externally. However, it had much smaller dimensions with a body length of about 6 meters and a weight of only about a ton, which is roughly 8 times smaller than a Tyrannosaurus. It is believed that such a reduction in size might have been associated with a food shortage. This dinosaur developed a set of unique adaptations. First and foremost, it was probably warm-blooded, with a metabolism that operated at a relatively high speed, similar to modern birds. Secondly, it had a unique feathered covering that allowed it to retain warmth in the harsh northern cold. This suggests that this northern lizard was likely an active and fast predator. It is assumed that Nanusaurus, like other northern dinosaurs, incubated their clutches and showed care for their young. Unfortunately, all these adaptations did not save Nanusaurus from extinction around 66 million years ago. The mass extinction event wiped non-avian dinosaurs, marine reptiles, and parasaurs from the face of the Earth, along with many other creatures. Nevertheless, these formidable reptiles left an important mark in the history of our planet. After their disappearance, ecological niches quickly filled with birds and mammals ushering in a new era, the Cenozoic. Its pinnacle creation was a unique creature known as Homo sapiens, who boldly declared themselves the rulers of nature. Their journey continues, and only time will reveal where it leads. The global extinction of dinosaurs marked the onset of a new geological era known as the Cenozoic. 
This era began 66 million years ago and continues to this day. Over the course of this era, Earth's surface underwent significant transformations, giving rise to previously unseen forms of life. The first period of this new era is called the Paleogene. It began immediately after the catastrophe that wiped out the dinosaurs and lasted for 43 million years. During this time, the face of our planet changed significantly. In the first 10 million years, the Earth's biosphere recovered from the devastating impact. Agile and resilient mammals quickly adapted to the newly available ecological niches, previously occupied by the old rulers. Life sought new forms, giving rise to fierce Andrusarchus, gigantic but sluggish Indracotherium, or aquatic archaic whales, the ancient ancestors of modern whales. Many of these remarkable animals disappeared without a trace, while others evolved to adapt to changing conditions. About 23 million years ago, the Paleogene was succeeded by the Neogene period, which lasted for approximately 20 million years. Earth's ice caps gradually expanded while the planet's climate became cooler and drier. The global sea level dropped and mountain ranges such as the Alps or the Andes grew. This process led to the Mediterranean Sea being cut off from the world ocean and virtually drying up. In its place, a vast lowland covered with a salt desert remained. According to calculations, temperatures in some parts of this region reached 80 degrees Celsius. Only a few small lakes filled with extremely salty water dotted the middle of this lifeless, pale wasteland. During this era, our planet was inhabited by numerous unusual creatures. Gigantopithecus roamed through the dense Asian jungles. These were gigantic human-like apes, standing over three meters tall and weighing up to half a ton. Terrifying entelodons, hoofed predators the size of bulls, struck fear into the inhabitants of the steppes. In the depths of the seas, megalodons dominated, which were the largest carnivorous sharks in the Earth's history just over five million years ago. An area known as Gibraltar was struck by a powerful earthquake. The stone dam that had separated the Mediterranean Sea from the Atlantic Ocean for hundreds of thousands of years finally collapsed, and millions of tons of water rushed into the giant lifeless plain. It took only two years for the sea to refill, with thousands of tons of salt forever buried beneath multi-kilometer layers of sand and stones. This grand event was named the Zanklin Deluge and is considered the beginning of the Pliocene Epoch, which lasted for 2,745,000 years. By this time, the continents had already settled into their familiar positions. However, some details of the landscape were still in the process of forming. For instance, at the beginning of the epoch, North and South America were still separated by a wide strait, and the Rocky Mountains had only just begun their growth. In the first half of the Pliocene, the Earth's climate was relatively warm, with the planet's average temperature being 2-3 degrees Celsius higher than it is now. This additional heat was unevenly distributed, with tropical climates resembling modern ones, while northern regions were significantly warmer than the Arctic. Ice only occasionally covered the polar regions, and dense coniferous forests extended all the way to the northern reaches of Eurasia. It's worth noting that the continent's boundary was slightly further south than today, as due to the higher temperatures, the sea level was about 25 meters higher than it is now. Meanwhile, in Africa, the ancient ancestors of modern humans inhabited the continent. Ardipicus and Sahelanthropus, with the age of their remains estimated to be between four to six million years, lived in the region. The structure of their bodies was still far from human, and these creatures were undoubtedly advanced primates, but they had already taken the first step toward a new life. The features of the found skeletons indicate a tendency towards bipedalism, though the traits of arboreal inhabitants were still quite pronounced. Additionally, the brain case volume of these beings was larger than that of chimpanzees, and their dental structure approached that of more recent species. Possibly, the changing ancient primates can be attributed to the fact that around three million years ago, the continental plates of North and South America collided with each other, causing rapid uplift of the mountainous terrain. The strait between the continents was blocked by the Isthmus of Panama, impeding the free flow of warm oceanic waters. At the same time, the heights of the Rocky Mountains significantly increased. They became a barrier between the Atlantic and Pacific atmospheric currents. The combination of all these factors led to gradual cooling and partial glaciation of the Earth. An ice shield covered the entire planet at the North Pole. 
Greenland began to be covered by a multi-ton glacier, and the area of African forests significantly decreased, giving way to savannas and grasslands, the canopies of trees became a perfect place to live, safe, comfortable, and abundant in food. The ancient primates shared this opinion as they adapted quite well to a life in the trees. However, the global climate change destroyed a significant portion of African forests. Thousands of species lost their familiar habitats, and many of them vanished from the face of the earth. Others were forced to change to survive in the new conditions. Currently, the most thoroughly developed and argued hypothesis for the emergence of humanity is the savanna concept. According to this theory, the shortage of familiar food and vegetation drove our ancestors to explore the savanna full of unknown dangers. They were already somewhat adept at moving on two legs and using primitive tools like all hominids. These skills were essential for survival in the new environment. However, the savanna was deficient in easily digestible fruits because grass and leaves dominated the region. The key to survival for them was consuming animal flesh, which required them to be fast and strong for successful hunting. That's where bipedalism came into play, significantly increasing their mobility and enabling them to spot both prey and dangers from a distance. The upright body position strengthened their arms, enhanced their grip, and made it much more convenient to use sticks or sharpened stones. Dumbing together in small tribes, the new inhabitants of the savanna could collaborate in hunting or, at the very least, steal prey from other predators. It is believed that the need for collective action emerged during this period. As a result, brain development and primitive speech evolved. The ape-like Ardipithecus and Sahelanthropus began to acquire human traits, giving rise to the Australopithecines. These agile, clever, yet small beings inhabited the African territory between four and two million years ago. Unlike other primates, the Australopithecines primarily moved on two legs, although they still maintained a hunched posture. Their brains were larger than those of the human-like apes, but their internal structure was not significantly different. It is known that Australopithecines lived in groups and could cooperate for hunting and protection. Research shows that early species only used basic tool, while later ones learned to create the most primitive work and defense tools. Despite this, their average lifespan was no more than 20 years. Due to diseases, injuries, and attacks by wild animals, they couldn't live longer. Predators of that time seemingly regarded Australopithecines solely as a food source. For example, there were Dinophelids, large saber-toothed cats, living during that period. Dinophelids were a bit larger than modern leopards, with a significantly more robust build. These predators weighed up to 120 kilograms, with a height of about 70 centimeters. It was practically impossible to defend against such creatures alone, and our ancestors likely managed to deter them only through collective efforts. In the jungles of Asia, another giant resided, the elephant-like creature called Dinotherium. Its weight reached 14 tons, and it stood at around 4.5 meters. Among all terrestrial mammals that ever roamed the planet's surface, only the Indracotherium and mammoths were larger than it. It is assumed that these distant relatives of elephants lived in the forests of Asia and Africa and primarily fed on tree leaves. The most distinctive feature of these animals was their long and massive lower jaw tusks. 2,588,000 years ago, a grand event took place, known as the Gosmatuyama magnetic reversal. The Earth's magnetic poles switched places, and the lines of the magnetic field altered their direction. This transformation was accompanied by a fourfold reduction in the planet's protective magnetic field allowing cosmic rays harmful to all living organisms to reach the Earth's surface. Although this phenomenon lasted for only about 15,000 years, which is exceedingly brief in geological terms, it led to the mass extinction of several species. This magnetic inversion is considered a milestone marking the beginning of a new geological period called the Anthropocene. It is divided into two epochs, with the first being called the Pleistocene. It began 2,588,000 years ago and ended just 12,000 years ago. This time period experienced cyclical cooling with glacier growth. During the interglacial periods, temperatures rose and glaciers receded, raising sea levels. 
Such frequent climate fluctuations required living creatures to adapt quickly, expediting the process of evolution for all living beings. Australopithecines gave rise to two major branches of primates, the Paranthropus, all of whose representatives are currently extinct, and the Homo genus, which includes modern humans. The evolutionary path from higher primates to humans was neither straightforward nor clear. At least 24 species existed on our planet, some of whose representatives could be considered human to varying degrees. The process of human evolution and their ancestors naturally attracts a lot of attention and the details of it are continually refined. It's essential to remember that evolution is an extremely slow process, taking at least two to three million years for species to diverge fully. During this time, they can interbreed and produce viable hybrids. In the case of the Homo genus, which includes modern humans, its entire history spans around two and a half million years. When considering the most ancient human ancestors, this time frame can be approximately doubled. Furthermore, many populations lived in close proximity, implying that there were likely numerous diverse hybrids in nature. It's also important to note that human intraspecific variability is quite significant. Men and women significantly differ from each other, and representatives of different races also exhibit noticeable diversity. It is assumed that ancient species had races, and some of them might have been mistakenly categorized as separate species by researchers. New discoveries are gradually correcting these errors, adding important details to our knowledge. Despite all their progressive features, Australopithecines were primarily apes rather than humans. The first universally recognized member of the human lineage was the so-called Homo habilis, or handyman. Excavations suggest that they lived in Africa between 2 and 1.5 million years ago. They had a more developed brain compared to Australopithecines and could produce primitive tools. Their height was approximately 1.2 meters and their weight likely did not exceed 50 kilograms. One essential characteristic was that they were the first species with a big toe aligned with the other toes, similar to modern humans indicating full adaptation to bipedal locomotion. Another important feature was the structure of their jaws, suggesting the gradual development of the ability for articulate speech. During further evolution, around two million years ago, Homo ergaster and Homo erectus appeared. Various researchers consider them either close evolutionary branches or even subspecies of the same species. During migration, these human ancestors settled in Africa, Asia, and Europe, initiating numerous evolutionary lineages. One of these eventually led to the emergence of anatomically modern humans. Ancient humans, whether Neanderthals or Homo sapiens, lived in tribes and led a nomadic lifestyle, engaging in hunting and gathering. They were compelled to migrate constantly moving into new, untamed territories. Thus, primitive tribes gradually dispersed across all continents. The dispersal of ancient tribes coincided with the mass extinction of Pleistocene megafauna. From 50,000 to 10,000 years ago, mammoths, giant ground sloths, and saber-toothed cats, among other predators, disappeared from the Earth. Perhaps a similar fate would have befallen humans, However, approximately 12,000 years ago, another glacial period ended, and the Earth's climate became warmer and more humid. Fertile river valleys enabled our ancestors to transition to a settled way of life, initially involving agriculture, leading to what is known as the Neolithic Revolution. And a new era in the history of our planet began. The Holocene corresponds to the rapid spread growth and influence of the human species worldwide, this includes its entire written history, technological revolutions, the development of major civilizations, and the significant shift to urban life in the present. The impact of humans on the modern Earth and its ecosystems can be seen as globally significant for the future evolution of living species. The movement of continents due to plate tectonics amounted to less than a kilometer over the course of the 10,000 years of the Holocene Epoch. However, the melting of ice led to a rise in the global sea level of approximately 35 meters at the beginning of the Holocene. Moreover, many areas located above 40 degrees north latitude were depressed under the weight of Pleistocene glaciers and rose by as much as 180 meters. Post-glacial rebound in the Scandinavian region led to the formation of the Baltic Sea, 
Compared to the preceding cold period of glaciation, the climate during the Holocene was relatively stable. Ice core records show that prior to the Holocene, there was global warming following the end of the last glacial period and cooling periods, but climate changes became more regional in the early Younger Dryas. The Holocene was a period of warming in which the global climate became warmer. However, the warming likely wasn't uniform worldwide. The animal and plant world did not undergo significant changes during the relatively short Holocene, but significant shifts in the distribution of plants and animals occurred. Horses and camels replaced mammoths and mastodons. Giant bison, lions, elephants and camels became important representatives during the Holocene. The climate of the Holocene is characterized by relative stability compared to the preceding Pleistocene epoch, which included glacial periods. This period underwent several significant climate changes, but the overall trend was characterized by mildness and stability. Key features of Holocene climate include periods of warming and cooling. Minor climate changes, such as warming and cooling periods, occur during the Holocene. For example, between 8.2 and 11.7 thousand years ago, a relatively warm and humid period occurred, which essentially represents the current climate of the planet. One of the important aspects of climate change in the Holocene was the shift from hunting and gathering to agriculture. This allowed humanity to become more independent of nature and establish permanent settlements due to the climatic conditions that developed in specific parts of the world. Humanity was forced to migrate to live in more favorable conditions. This led to the spread of various cultures and civilizations worldwide. With the development of industrialization in the late Holocene, humanity began to have an increasingly significant impact on the climate by releasing large amounts of greenhouse gases and altering natural ecosystems. This led to an intensification of the greenhouse gas effect and climate change in more recent times. Human development during the Holocene epoch was incredibly rapid, but at the beginning, we were just starting to develop our speech. In the early Holocene, our distant ancestors expressed their ideas and experiences through art. Cave paintings were one of the first manifestations of human culture. These drawings, created on cave walls, depicted the lives of ancient hunters and gatherers. They not only provided insight into animals and the environment, but could also serve as a means of education and communication. In the early Holocene, there was no formal language. People relied on sign language or made sounds to express their emotions. It was only later that people began to develop the first languages, enabling them to communicate with each other. One of the very first languages, Sanskrit, emerged about three and a half thousand years ago in ancient India. This was followed by languages in ancient Greece and Egypt. Surprisingly, some people could converse in these languages but most of the population couldn't write in them because they were not taught. Significant changes occurred with the development of agriculture. This allowed humanity to become more settled and organized. With the emergence of farming and animal husbandry, people started growing their own food, leading to the establishment of settlements and villages. This transition to agriculture marked the beginning of population growth and the development of early civilizations such as ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian societies. Technologies played a crucial role in the development of human civilization. Tools, metallurgy, the wheel, and other inventions significantly improved production and enhanced the quality of life. With the development of agriculture and the growth of cities, there arose a need for recording and documentation systems. Writing systems emerged in different parts of the world, such as Chinese Mesopotamian and Hittite scripts becoming the foundation for storing knowledge and history. Humanity sought answers to questions about its origins. However, at that time, they had no means to determine it. But to make it easier for humans to feel their place in this world, various religious and philosophical systems emerged. Ancient religions such as Christianity, Islam, Buddhism and others emerged during this period. They influenced art, architecture and societal morals. With the development of navigation and transportation technologies, people began to explore and colonize new territories. This led to the creation of powerful empires, such as the Roman Empire and the Chinese Empire. Cultural exchanges between different parts of the world became commonplace, contributing to the spread of the idea of a global community. The late Holocene marked the beginning of the Industrial Period. 
The development of steam engines, electricity and modern technologies transformed production and transportation. Modern scientific discoveries in fields such as medicine, cosmology, information technology and others are opening new horizons for humanity. The development of the Earth was an incredible process that spanned millions of years of active phases. All of this led to the creation of intelligent beings like us humans. Thanks to our creation, we were able to learn about what existed long before in the history of our planet. We were able to understand that in the past, all continents were once part of a single supercontinent called Pangaea, which over time began to break apart due to geological processes. We traced the lives of dinosaurs, which lasted for almost 200 million years, and heard their deafening roars that echoed through the ancient world. We observed the fauna of the Ice Age with its gigantic mammoths and saber-toothed tigers, and we entered the epoch of the Holocene, in which we currently live. This era is truly the most significant in the history of humanity, because we are endowed with intelligence. What lies ahead for us? What discoveries will humans make? Perhaps robots will govern us, or maybe we will colonize other planets like Mars. Or we might face the same fate as the dinosaurs with a massive asteroid wiping us out from Earth.